George Memorial Library, and today I'm at the old Richmond Jail House. The historic Richmond Jail is located at 600 Preston Street and is actually the third jail that was used in Richmond. It was built in 1897 and the building included the sheriff's office and living quarters on the first floor. The jail was separated from the other sections by a large iron door. Facing the building, the entrance to the family and office area is the door on the left. The jail was through the entrance on the right. Originally, there were bars in the archway. During the 1996 renovation, the city decided to remove the bars to give the building a more pleasing appearance. Here is an old photograph of the jail with its bars. Also during the renovation, a new section was added to the building and the new entranceways are on both sides of the addition. The front foyer of the building was set up as a museum. But as the need for more space developed, the museum was eventually removed. Now, they have a display case that holds some historical information on the sheriffs and the jail. In the center of the jail, on the third floor, a platform was built with a trap door that acted as the gallows. For many years, local legend said that no one was ever hung from the jail gallows. However, records have since been discovered which indicate that at least three men were hung. According to an article published in the Fort Bend Mirror on November 19, 1980, Two men were hung on October 12, 1898. One of the men, Emmanuel Morris, was hung inside the jail, while the other, Pete Autry, was allegedly hung outside the jail. Since both executions took place on the same day, it seems unlikely it would have been at different locations. Another man, Archie Gibson, was hung on May 29, 1885, according to a story in the Galveston Daily News from May 30, 1885. All three men were African American. Hanging was outlawed in 1925 and replaced by the electric chair. The cells next to the gallows were death row, where the inmates were held before execution. Underneath is another cell. The major cell blocks were on the left and right of the gallows area. The second and third floors had individual cells and areas for solitary confinement. This control panel allowed the doors to be opened or locked. The department still has the combination for the lock. The 
cells were very small and lacked more of the modern conveniences, like plumbing. The major cell blocks were on either side of the gallows area. You can see the wide doorway that leads to the cells. The rooms were originally two stories, as you can see with a ledge around the center of the room. The upper floor was for female prisoners. The other block was larger and included a catwalk. The cell door up the stairs was the solitary confinement cell. Going back to the main lobby. Everything on one side of the hallway is from the 1890s, and everything on the other side is from the 1990s. Also, the limestone at the bottom was taken from the same quarry. The only difference is you can see the chisel marks in the 1890s stone, and the stone from the 1990s is smoother. Here is the front door to the living area. It still has the original hinges and the counterweight used to keep the window open. The living quarters also included transom windows above the doors. Where the fireplace is was the living room area. This area was part of the museum when it was here. Here is where the spiral staircase used to be. The inmates were brought to the jail through this door. And this is the window where food was passed into the prison. The food was generally prepared by the sheriff's wife. Embedded on the walls is the original tape measure where prisoners were measured and photographed. The door to the left of the tape measure and food slot leads to the basement, which is unusual for the area. This is what the building looked like before the police moved in.
This half door was originally a full-size door. After some flooding, the area behind it was filled up, so now it is at ground level. To the right, though it is difficult to see, is a wall. And then this wall sealed in whatever is behind them, so everything in that space is original. It would be interesting to see what's behind it. Perhaps someday they can get an x-ray machine and see what's back there. Also, many ghost hunters and paranormal investigators have visited the jail. They also tend, I'm told, to get more activity in the basement and the main cell blocks rather than around the gallows. Now, I'm skeptical when it comes to paranormal phenomena, but while we were in the basement, we heard an unusual sound. Unfortunately, my camera did not pick it up. Not sure what it was or where it came from, but because we were in the basement, it did seem particularly spooky. In 1955, a new jail was built by the county and the old jail was sold. Most of the interior and external iron steel bars were removed and sold for scrap. The building was then used as housing for low-income tenants. In 1977, the building was donated along with the surrounding land to the Fort Bend County Museum. From 1980 to 1987, the Confederate Museum leased the jail. In 1996, a suggestion was made to renovate the old jail building and use it as the Richmond Police Department, and it could be used as the focal point for future downtown renovation. And finally, near the flagpoles, is a memorial to the canines that served in the Richmond Police Department. more of this type of video, feel free to let me know. And go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you around the bend.